And up to bat first is Ray Allen. <laughs> With Joe Biden here to follow him. A bill to help first time home buyers. No, that would be so annoying. I can't do it the whole time. It'd just it's be really annoying. annoying. So consumers have closely been following President Joe Biden's proposal to first time home buyer mm-hmm. tax credit, but the latest legislative effort to assist home buyers differs in several significant ways. The newest draft of down payment assistance bill would provide twenty five thousand dollars. Ray, 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 yeah. Ray. Yeah. Keep reading, buddy. Ah. $25,000 to first time home buyers. Hey, that's still pretty good, right? No, 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 no. No. Keep going, keep going. But only those who are first generation home buyers and economically yeah. disadvantaged. <laughs> there it is. Huh. <laughs> so you mean to tell me that if my mom and dad just bought a house this last year, you're out. They've screwed me out of $25,000. Yeah. This is interesting. <laughs> So my first question, I'll let you get back to the article, but anyone uh, watching on, on the YouTubes or listening on Clubhouse, I'd love to hear your input here because my question is, like, my dad bought in 1974. Is Am I out? Is there any way to track that? What if no, the house... That is not, you're, not, you're not a first-generation home buyer. Well, what if the house has been in the family since 1840? Like, how do they track that? Anyway, sorry, go on, Ray. We'll circle back. This is very interesting. Are they going to go by ownership? Are they going to go by purchase? Are they going to go by how many years? Okay. Uh, So it's called the Down Payment Toward Equity Act of 2021. Um, That's a great name for a bill. The proposed down payment assistance would be a means tested based on income and limited to those who have not owned a house for at least three years. But does that still mean, what about your parents owning a house? What's first generation? To qualify, right. neither of the borrower's parents may have owned a home. Okay, so. What okay. if they bought the home after I moved out? Because I grew up in a rental. And, and, and we had a trailer and then a rental. And I grew up in a rental. Once I moved out of the house, my parents built their dream home. <laughs> <laughs> and then screwed you out of 25 grand. Today. <laughs> and if I hadn't bought a home yet, now that my parents own a home, that means that I'm no longer first generation. Oh, hmm. that qualification doesn't apply if the borrower's parents lost their home in foreclosure or due to short sale. Oh my gosh. So, and okay, but here's the other now thing. This, it says, this part's cool that I agree with, or if the borrower has been in foster care, well, that's cool, but okay. My parents would have to lose their house, go into foreclosure or short sale, and then I'm now newly eligible to receive $25,000. Even though, okay, but here's my other thing is it, it, I didn't know the article said this, but it says either parent. So what if one yeah. of them bought before your parents got married, before you were, you were even a thought? Yeah. Are you out? Yeah. Or if they sold and now didn't own for years, had you you're out you're still or or if your parents got divorced right but you're you live with mom as a rental dad goes and buys a house you're out you're out and then okay what about this in your scenario ray what if you got yourself ready you bought a house before your parents are they out (laughs) no they could well uh they would technically be first generation if they're only looking at their parents so they would still be in. They would still be in if they unless, had not built their dream home. Unless yeah. your grand, one of your grandparents bought. Before. Unless grandma and grandpa bought, which my grandparents are, did. So how are they going to track that? I don't. Uh, this is this is a mess already. Borrowers who make no more than one hundred and twenty percent of the median income where they live, or if they a high cost area, one hundred and eighty percent would qualify for a baseline of twenty thousand dollars. Those recognized as socially disadvantaged because they are in a group that has been subject to racial or ethnic prejudice could receive an additional $5,000. The grant funding, which is not a tax credit, could be used at closing toward a down payment on a residential property with one to four units, including a condominium, uh, corporate project, or manufactured housing unit. That would buy like half of a manufactured unit in some areas. Where is, uh, where's Christina M. Smallhorn? Oh, uh, she'll be here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the program, which is currently being discussed to the House of Representatives, would dole out funds to states based on population, median income, racial disparities, and home ownership rates. 
So this is one of those government programs that gives the grant money to the states and the states are responsible for tracking all that information and figuring okay. out who gets it and who doesn't get it and all that stuff. And then it'll probably go down to the local level and whatnot. But <laughs> I, okay. In, in theory, this yeah. is cool. And, but by the way, remember when they first started talking about this before Biden was even president, or maybe it was on his first hundred days list or something, but uh, it was 10 grand or 15 grand and now it's 20 or 25 grand. In theory, that's pretty rad, but there's a pretty big asterisk on this one. That yeah, there's a huge asterisk on it. It's not never mentioned before. Dollar tax credit. Um, so those who do not have family members to guide them through applying for a mortgage are less likely to submit themselves to the process that is rife with fear and dread. "Quote unquote." That's what I got the National Housing Conference said. David. Dwarf so it's is. looking to get them going, you yeah. know, but to really. And this yeah. is this is one of the things that they say, like, basically, the illusion is that if your parents own a home, then you're well off enough to figure it out yourself. Yeah. So it says, I got the daddy down payment loan. My dad was proud to give it to me, said Dworkin. Uh, and he's the president of the Nation National Housing Conference. I don't know. It. Yeah. <sighs> I would love to hear some opinions on this from the clubhouse crew and from some of the people that are, um, that are commenting on YouTube. Um, <laughs> producer Matt says, Hey dad, would you mind foreclosing on your house real quick? <laughs> yeah. Just foreclose real quick so I can then buy a house and then you're good again because you're, you're back to your first generation. So you're fine. Yep. Uh, Melissa Mars says, because applying for a, a home loan is so hard. Is it really that hard? No, it's not at all. Uh, Sean Nelson joining us from Facebook says, do we expect many more buyers with the monthly plus up payments starting soon? Off topic, kind of on topic, plus up payments. What is that? Is that, is that where, is that where somebody's or, refined a down payment in there? And so they have an additional, additional monthly payment. Is that what you're talking about, Sean? Um, uh, Mario Flores says, seems good for people who may be economically disadvantaged and introduce those people to the real estate market with support, right. giving more opportunity to people who may never could, may have never could. Yeah, I, I can think see that's that. the, yeah, that's a good angle to take on. And it's a good way to, to get there. You know, it's assuming quite a bit though. And I, again, I need to know how far, what generation does it go? Is it just your parents? So if grandparents bought, but parents didn't, you're good. Like how far does it go back? But it is a good way to get there. I think it's just going to, uh, uh, yeah, I'm always lagging. Um, but I, you know, it's a good way to get there. But it's it's interesting to see what this what does Generation One mean? First generation. What does that mean? Ronnie, this is a great point. Ronnie Long, CrossFitter and Realtor Extraordinaire, says, "Let's complicate it." I'm adopted and grew up in rentals, but my biological parents are rich somewhere and own multiple homes. Hmm. Yeah. And I have a friend who's similar situation, literally owns his, his real dad, literally owns an island and hotels on that island. But he's adopted. So. All right. So I'd uh, love to hear some thoughts. I know Ryan is up there. Ryan, do you have any thoughts on this in particular? I'm going to go to the, the clubhouse folks. Ryan, uh, what do you think about this, man? Ryan's not here. All right. So Alan, I know you're up on stage. What do you think about this, man? Uh, I mean, it's definitely funny. I love, I love the, the twist you guys put on it. And I mean, this is the first time I'm listening into the podcast. It's actually my first Yay. day on clubhouse in general. Um, no real input. It's crazy. I mean, it's just so many obscure things that come in and, uh, I guess you have to take everything with a grain of salt and sort of like look at why the law is the way it is. And, uh, you know, there's people that sit down for hours upon hours making these, this stuff up. It doesn't come out of the blue. But um, very interesting. Uh, not too much to say on this topic, but uh, definitely some articles later on that I'll chime in on more. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Ooh, what a tease. <laughs> what a, <laughs> what a tease. <laughs> Thanks, Alec. All right, uh, Jan, I'm trying to bring you up, man. You have to, I know Clubhouse is lagging a little bit, so uh, tell me if you don't get that. You gotta, Eureka, do you have anything to add to this? I mean, I like the idea that it's supposed to help those that are economically disadvantaged. Yeah. That's great. But this is, uh, this is really interesting uh, to me, is like, what, what's it going to do for the housing market as a whole? Is it going to impact those in the lower third of the market? Because chances are, first-time homebuyer, they're not buying in the mid-market or luxury. 
So, well, I mean, that would be also interesting, <laughs> but if they have the income, if they say you can't make more than 120% of the median income, well, 180% in the higher, 180% in the higher, maybe like in the Silicon <laughs> Valley area, then, uh, then what is that going to do for the housing market in those locations? It'll further constrain some inventories, right? I mean, that's almost double though, 80% higher than the median income. That's that's a good chunk. I mean, you know, so that'd be interesting to see what it does in those areas. And then does 25 grand help in those areas? Right. Glenn Fernando uh, yeah. chimes in on Alan and says, uh, first time listener, first time caller. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who, who is it? Yeah, I, I promise. I'll be, I was also, uh, I'm at work right now, guys. So like I have you, I have my own <laughs> office, but I have you guys on. I, I was, I was caught up in something, but I'll, I'll, I'll be more attentive. I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be a good, uh, oh, no, good contributor. Good. I promise. You're good. You're good. Oh, speaking of be more contributors, we actually have a group on Facebook called be more contributors. And if you are not in that group, you should join that group. Uh, we, every now and then we'll discuss some of what's happening on the market. We'll discuss some of these articles. And so if you, if you can uh, just look up B M O R E space contributors with an exclamation point, because we were excited when we made the group. We and, were, we were really excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dan, Dan, they're calling your uh, your Wi-Fi socialist. Uh, does that mean you're sharing it and, and uh, getting it off of your neighbor? Uh, it actually does. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big Bernie fan, so that figured. There you, you go. Know, hey, the, the right, Wi-Fi yeah. password wasn't that hard to figure out, but <laughs> yeah. And I'm I'm trying to send you the invite to come on up because I see that your hands raised, but it's just not working. So you may have to leave the room. Oh, you are. He's up. All right, let me see. He wanted to comment on this specifically. Jan, what do you have yeah. to say, man? Yes, I, I've had a, a spotty connection, so uh, thank you for having me up here. So, yeah, I wanted to add a point because I've, uh, I have I come from a mortgage background, so I kind of seen how this program or programs like this could help. I think uh, despite all this, uh, you know, uh, negativity or like the fact that, okay, it may uh, push them into uh, owning a home, whereas... Uh, you know, in the future, they may not be afforded. I think overall it has helped them because like you said, uh, they uh, they wouldn't be able to afford it. Like if their income is good enough to qualify, uh, the down payment assistance programs, uh, if, uh, and I'm, I'm, I, I may not uh, have heard the question completely, but correct me if I'm wrong. I think the question was, if those down payment assistance programs or the grants or zero down uh, programs are good or not, is that the question? Yeah, kind of. We're talking about this one specifically that requires you you to be a first generation home purchaser. Like your parents can't own a home. So I agree with you in in general. What I think you're saying is, John, like these down payment assistance programs and things, those are great. Uh, however, um, I think there may be too many restrictions on this one that kind of complicate the issue. And that's that's my only problem with it. It's like, I love the down payment assistance program. I love giving those that are maybe economically disadvantaged some extra boost to come into home ownership because okay. I think it does lead to wealth. And that's been proven year after year after year when they've done the studies that the, the pathway to home ownership generally leads to wealth and generational wealth. So that's good. But I think there's other ways that they could have targeted this, maybe just based on income, maybe just based on where someone uh, where someone is in the process in their own life without having a bearing on what happens to mom and dad. Because you're going to get into a lot of issues where you have kids that have been basically disowned by their parents, but not formally. They've never been in foster care. They've never gone through the adoption process. They've never been, quote unquote, disowned, but yet yeah. their parents own property. So now what? Because they've been on their own since they were 14. And so those are the types of people that I think should also be able to take advantage of this. What about, what about first generation Americans and people that are here for the first time that their parents own property in Mexico or own property in Europe? Can they take advantage of this or are they going to somehow look at what mom and dad did in another country, but that's not helping them here. So I don't know. It seems convoluted yeah. and I think they could have <laughs> simplified a lot of it to make it more effective. What do you say, Jan? I totally agree. I'm not a huge fan of all these restrictions, you know. Uh, I, I keep ranting, uh, you know, being from California and, uh, you know, all this uh, madness that is going out here with all these moratoriums and everything and the nightmares that we're going through with our, uh, you know, with my clients. They call me, I hear some horror stories, you know, and maybe a little bit off topic, but it's, uh, I, I thought I can 
rant a little bit. Uh, you know, they, they have this stupid moratorium now in place and uh, you, uh, you have these tenants. I mean, there are some that are impacted and rightfully so, but, uh, but there, there is a good, good portion that they are not impacted. They just decided not to pay rent. And because of all this uh, kind of one size fit all uh, rules that sort of is for one class and excludes the other, you will see so much injustice that is going on. Like I have these clients that like one of my, my uh, clients, she's a lady, she's an old lady. All her income is from that rental property she has and her tenants are not just paying and she can't do anything. And then they have this uh, state assistance program uh, and that only applies if she, if the tenant is cooperative and proves wow. she, her income or uh, his income has been reduced due to COVID. So she's saying it's reduced the tenant but then she's not willing to pr provide any documentation. So yeah. first of all, she's not paying rent. The, the landlord cannot do anything. Uh, thirdly, uh, she cannot get any help from state either because she cannot prove documentation the tenant cannot. So so things like this, when they introduce something with some benefits to a, just one group and exclude the other, I overall, I, I see a lot of negativity coming out of it. So down payment assistance programs, if it's just for everyone, I totally agree. But this, when they just choose a specific group, I'm not a huge fan of it. And it is, from, it is coming from someone in California with all these um, li liberal rules, and I'm, I'm fine with it, but it's just sometimes getting too much. So that's my two cents. Well, remember, our last governor wasn't liberal. Just FYI. <laughs> so some, some of those rules in place aren't just liberal. But anyway. All right, DJ uh, I, good point. Too, so I, I know how California works, but I do have a listing right now with a tenant in it that just will not cooperate, won't do pictures, won't do anything. So I, I get it. I totally get that. D Jones brings up a good point. She says the problem is the sellers aren't accepting those offers with grants. That's a great point. Yeah. So here's what I do like. I mean, I like a lot of things about it. In theory, it's good. But what I like that they're giving the grants to the state level. You know, they're, it's not the government because that's a really broad stroke of the brush but they give it to the state and then hopefully it goes down to the local the city level and then they can decide you know hopefully kind of what you were saying ray um and was it jan yeah that it'll, it'll go more individual based and then they can make their case by case basis not so uh you know just umbrella and not so blankety i i hope it kind of goes up <clears throat> $25,000 is a lot. We'll see kind of how that works. Um, and is it just for down payment or can they use that for the appraisal gap? Ooh. Anyway, speaking of moratoriums, Dan, uh, you are, so you are a little bit blurry. So make sure you don't have anything running in the background, but do you want to go ahead and cover the next story? Yeah, I don't have anything. I never have anything in the background. Interesting. I know. I, I can't wait for Matt to tell me how to do technology stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just for context, guys. Last week, Dan was also having a little bit of issues with it. And so Matt was sending him messages like, hey, here's how to reset your router and what to do and all this stuff. So Dan used to make video games. <laughs> so right. he's, he's pretty technologically oriented. But it was great, though, because I love that Matt like took it upon himself to be like, ah, oh, let me help this guy. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, it is. It's just because he's a caring kid and we're messing with him a little bit. But but I mean, old kid, man Dan and his wife. Me too. I'm 47, so I get it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I totally get it. The D uh, says you can use the grant for closing and down payment only, so no gap. Okay, you could use the grant for closing down payment only. So you got to use your own money for that appraisal gap. 